Whoa, yeah, swear to God I'm with it I don't see nobody in my lane It's quite go get it like me Whoa, please don't be wasting my time with that business Who are you kidding, man? Yeah, 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 yeah Alright guys, I promise this is the last one of the series, the last Marshall and Lynch video for the day and for the week until next week after we see him play. Um, I want to get my head around this Super Bowl 49 controversy. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to watch uh, the last minute and 10 seconds of the game and uh, after that we're actually going to watch uh, Pete Carroll's thoughts after making that call and we're going to watch Marshall and Lynch's thoughts too. So let's get into it. It's going to be shitty quality, but it's alright. The helmet catch. So Tom Brady's just thrown an interception. Okay. Oh, this is going to be incredible. Look at that. But they're not dead yet. There's the Ron Harmon who comes over the top. He had a chance to maybe kick it away. Curse comes up with it. Amazing. All the five. What? No, no. Okay, so he made a catch. Okay, so that was a crazy catch on the five on the five yard line. That receiver just caught that with a minute to go in the Super Bowl to give Seattle an opportunity to score a winning touchdown. Holy shit! I thought that was an interception, but it wasn't. That was a reception. Okay, what do we got here? We've got Marshall and Lynch lining up at the back. We've got two receivers. I've actually never seen two receivers line up like that. Holy shit, let's see what happens. Not even the play, it gets better. Oh fuck, I was watching those receivers. Oh, if you're in the crowd watching that. Oh. Clock's running. Clock's running. Unbelievable. So Marshall Lynch actually went for a pass and I don't know whether he would have got it but they probably should have just let him run. Is that what they're saying? Oh, how does that defend it? Okay this defender's marking this fella. He can see it coming man. I can fucking see it coming. But not only was it an incompletion, it was, a, it was an interception. I mean, if that was incomplete, it wouldn't be so bad, but an interception? Oh, God. Oh, God. Un fucking believable Seattle passes on the goal line top 10 worst plays all right let's watch this this is a good one 
we actually get some commentary to it, which is good. Okay. The worst play. The worst play of all time. Makes me happier than other people's misery. Oh no! And that's why I'm excited that this is number one on the list. Ooh. Fact is, Seattle sure won a second Super Bowl. Pete Carroll's voice just broke. Bro. And they just blew it with the worst play in history. the average person today, where do you think that play ranks in NFL history? I think a number of people would put it pretty darn high. So that would be the worst play. See, that's not fair. And let me tell you why that's not fair. Because that was an amazing play by Malcolm Butler. Malcolm Butler! Yeah. Out of the yeah. Good call. Good call. You're cheapening Malcolm Butler's achievement there by calling that the worst play. Actually, a very, it's a great play. Our number one play may have shocked on Bro, oh, bruh. Is that, is that the coach? Unreal. Oh, fuck, that looks like the coach. <laughs> this wasn't just pure luck. This wasn't just a random guess by a player at the line. The Patriots had actually practiced this exact play. And it was Malcolm Butler who got burned in practice on this play. So when he saw the Seahawks line up in this formation, a light went off in his head. Brandon Browner recognized the play. He stayed deep so that he didn't get caught up with the, the offense and uh, just waited for that outside receiver to, to run the screen. And yeah. Told them where to go and what to do. And they did exactly what they needed to do at that time. Most people lay the blame for our number one worst play on a coaching decision gone wrong. That's the worst play in history because that was the first time it felt like the coach was like, I don't know, this, this is the one moment I could be smarter than that coach. He took himself out of the game and his ego got in the way. We never did that this season. That's hubris. That's the coach going, pass it. Peek out. No, 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 no. Pass it. Trust me. The Seahawks and Pete Carroll's legacy is going to be that play. Oh, oh. Unless they win it this year. You are on the one yard line, and you have number 24, and you drop back pass. Are you kidding me? We're going to be second guessing that forever. No way in the world. Second down, you got that beast back there. You take that shot. You got another down. I'm glad they didn't. <laughs> Fuck, man, this is straight after the game. Tom Brady, I'm glad they didn't. <laughs> hey, it is what it is, man. Patriots were up. Seahawks couldn't bring it back. But what a catch! What if that catch never happened, that amazing catch, to get them on the five-yard line? And then Marshall and Lynch was so close. You know what I would have done in Madden? I would have run it to the left with Marshall and Lynch, gets tackled at the first, I would have run the exact same play but switched it to the other side and seen what happens. That's the one thing you did not do. They're on the one yard line, why? They had three shots and running in the ball. They did. They did, actually. They were on the second down, and they had a timeout to go. Yeah. How are you throwing that ball? No one expects that to be an interception. Oh. Everybody knew that they should run the ball. Marshawn Lynch knew they should run the ball. Marshawn has done a fair amount of damage today. He counted down the ball! My grandma knew they should run the ball. The only guy who didn't know that they should run the ball was Pete Carroll. Malcolm Butler plays number one, and it's not even close. If you ask me, give me a word when you think of that play. Stupidity. What, what are they doing? Oh, my God! It's this has to be on the list. This is the worst play in football's history. It's got to be one of the dumbest calls offensively in Super Bowl history. Are you kidding me? This is the worst football play at any level. For over a hundred years, 
in North America. It was sort of epic system failure from the call to the implementation oh, of the call. Oh man! Of the call. Four years later! Still can't handle it. The worst thing I've ever seen. Guys, that was really cool. Now I know what happened. Now I know what happened. Hey, you're one of the most epic humans walking this earth. <laughs> Good call, Pat. The first part of our exclusive. Good call, Pat. All right, all right, all right, all right. We've seen that. Okay, now. Okay, so this is like a few days after the Super Bowl. Pete Carroll opens up after stunning loss. It's two minutes long. I mean, this can't be easy for him, but we're going to hear. <laughs> we're going to hear what happens. Interview with Seattle Seahawks head coach Pete Carroll. Many fans believe that his controversial play call at the end of the Super Bowl cost his team the game. So we travel to Seattle to talk to the coach about that play, the scrutiny he's under, and how he's coping with it all. I'm interested to hear. Tell me a little bit about what it's been like to be Pete Carroll over these last three days. Well, there's been a, uh, it's been a whirlwind. There's been a lot going on. I feel responsible for a lot of people right now. Um, it, certainly you know, from the family to the organization of players and the coaches and all that, but it extends well beyond that, you know, as you go out into our community and the, the area that follows us. There's a lot of people that, that really care a lot about what we're doing, and uh, it's it, our game hit them really hard. I You're answering need a little stuff. bit like Pete Carroll, the football coach, and let me, let me try it again. What's it been like to be Pete Carroll, the human being, over these past three days? Uh, it started off with uh, having to get right. I had to get my mind right so that I could take on what, what I was going to have to do. Uh, that was to face everybody and, and give them some perspective so that we can move ahead. I watched your expression as you saw that play unfold and you bent over at the waist and my heart broke for you, to be perfectly honest. How were you feeling inside? Immediately. I mean, within the instant of the turnover, the gravity of, of what just happened, I, I, I understood. You have not watched TV. I'm sure that's somewhat of a self-imposed blackout a little bit. There you, there you go. You don't want to hear the negativity, but you know what's being said. You've heard the experts, mm -hmm. not just average Joe, say it was the worst mm -hmm. call ever. It was the worst result of a call ever. <laughs> yeah, the interception, man. The call would have been a great one if we catch it. It would have been just fine and nobody would have thought twice about it. I don't want to see more of that. What are you doing? Well, we've got more. We got we've got more. Oh, it's a long show, Carson. Really? Yeah. Uh, that was great. I give him a lot of credit for sitting down. Yeah, absolutely. And answering questions, because this has got to be a really, really tough time. No question what else did he say? Why didn't you run the ball? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have much more. <laughs> That's the fucking question, man. It's a million dollar question. Did you want Russell Wilson to be the hero? Mm -hmm. Were you having problems with Marshawn Lynch? Who knows, guys? Who knows? At least I've seen the play, and at least we've reacted together. Now, to finish this video off, to finish this one off, we are going to watch Marshall Lynch talking about that Super Bowl 49 pass. Now, this is just earlier this year. So, you know, three years removed. He's having a beer with old Pat McAfee. Let's see if he opens up. Hey, you're one of the most epic humans walking this earth. Um... Yeah, you are. I, I just everything you do, you just you <laughs> give zero fucks about anything. It seems like. Are oh, we going that route? Yeah. What's happening with you, man? Yeah, yeah we're going. That <laughs> He's loving it now. Yeah, well, let's go that route. I here. think the world got to see you in that Super Bowl press conference, right? Is that right? I think so. I mean, that was the talk of the town. Uh, you say I'm just here so I won't get fined. That was it. There's no other explanation other than that. That was it. That was all. You didn't want to talk to the media at all? So after the game, is that the first time that he said that line of just being here because he didn't get fined? How come? No, I did want to talk to the media. I did talk to them. Yeah. I just didn't talk about what they wanted to talk to me about. So they made a mockery of me. Did you catch any hell on the backside of that from the NFL? That seems like something Goodell would not love. You know, I caught a lot of hell from that. They weren't happy with you? No, fuck that. Do you think that had to do with not giving you the ball in the one yard line? I don't know. You think they would have been able to turn some shit around that quick? I don't know. That's what I'm wondering because there's a chance that happens. Then all of a sudden the hero of the Super Bowl could have been. And they're like, excuse me, do not give him the ball. Right you now. think it was like that wild wing commercial? That was a hit the button. <laughs> they hit the button. Hey, can we keep this game going a little longer? We need overtime and shit. I don't, to be honest, I 
Shit, I don't know. But if it's somebody that could pull it off, I, I would think it would be the NFL that could. It felt like the Seattle Seahawks were on their way to be a dynasty. You were a massive yes. part of that. The Legion of Boom was a massive part of that. Yes. Everything kind of crumbled over there. It really, it was insane to watch happen because this was a team that could have went on and done incredible things all the way around. Yeah, and that play, and you talk about the Super Bowl, and, and, it's, and it's crazy to me that most people would, would bring up the fact like, oh, that's the guy that, that don't talk in interviews type shit. Rather than, that's the guy that don't Where you going? honesty because they coach decided to, you know what I mean, throw a, throw a pass play or something like that. But it's crazy how all this shit get looked at. Did you, you were on the side. Give me some of that lean, man. No, you were in the game. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You were in the game when you didn't get the ball. I was in the huddle. And the play gets called. True. And you sit there. This is extremely great inside information. Because I assume the entire offensive line who, any offensive line likes to run the ball. I would assume everybody in that huddle had a moment of, well, what the hell is going on here? Is that fact? Yeah, it was kind of a pause, kind of a, a what the fuck moment, a, a kind of, you know, everybody tired. We just put together a drive, too, you know what I'm talking about? Fourth quarter Super Bowl. We just put, yeah, one of them ones. 26 weeks into it's, a season. You know, it's one of them ones where you, I don't know who that old dude is, but when he do all the recaps of the game, make them real dramatic, like, yeah. Bulldinger. Then they go down and they, you know what I mean? You, you could hear his voice type of, that was the drive that we just put together. Like the Steve Sable from NFL Films. Oh, that's his name? I, I don't know if he's still alive. Yeah, I put, oh, well, shit, we need to. That's on me. There, now you set you up for failure. Yeah, I. <laughs> <laughs> See how that I shit turned around? Me, yeah, I set me you up. Be careful with me, bro. <laughs> be careful with me. But the whole way that thing just <clears throat> just played out, because, I, you know, we had uh I think I went and ran a, a sluggo, which was a big play. Then we had the receiver. Explain what a sluggo is, please. I believe a sluggo, I think sluggo, actually, let me try and do this. Sluggo is where the running back runs through the line, turns around, does a hitch, and, and looks for that ball. A slam and go. You're talking to Canadians, NFL's on the zone. A <laughs> slam and go. A slam and go. Yeah, okay, so you ran a A slug. double move, double which move. is not common for a running back to run. Yep. But, uh, you know, ran a slug goal, and we probably got like a 30, 40 yard uh, pass reception on that. And then uh, Curse had uh, had that juggling catch. It was a magical drive. Yeah, you know what I mean? Everything was coming together. Everything. And then. Uh, and Marshawn Lynch takes a, a nice outside zone to the one yard line, and the rest is history. <clears throat> the shit came to an end. <laughs> <laughs> Relatively quickly. Just like that. Relatively, Relatively like, quickly. Just like that. And flight, I mean. Flight home from the Super Bowl after this. Game of inches, isn't it, guys? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't get on the flight. You didn't get on the plane? Nah. We Done with blew it. the hotel down. <laughs> <laughs> we blew that motherfucker down, bro. I'm talking about we blew it down, though. Oh. I mean, I, I had an interesting uh, little journey after that. Okay. You know what I mean? Uh, just, leaving from the, uh, just leaving from the stadium and getting over to... Uh, uh, back to the hotel. You had a good time. I had a great time. Had a bottle of pure white Hennessy in my bag. Oh, that's fantastic, mate. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, I got a nice escort. Like a police escort? Like U.S. Marshals type shit. Oh, this was like... Cause there are <laughs> I thought he was saying he went back to the hotel with his bottle of Hennessy and got a, a prostitute. Plenty of different types of escorts. <laughs> I mean, shit, it was probably some escorts out there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I, yeah, I'm going to tell him to sell it, personally, myself. Yeah. I'm going to tell him to sell it, but at the end of the day, like, it was it was a, a, a vehicle yeah. escort. Uh, please, that yeah, U.S. Marshal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, lights, the whole thing. No, no lights. Okay. But on the way, on the way out, of the, uh, out of the stadium, you know, I seen my family ride by him. I jump out the window with the bottle of Hennessy. Hey, meet me at the hotel. We about to blow it down ASAP. We get back to the hotel, you know what I mean? He's the man! He's the man! He just got snubbed for that final run. They just lost the Super Bowl, but he's alright. He's sweet. Oh, I love that about Marshall and Lynch. Get down. It's just a game, guys. Enjoy our little time or whatever. After that... Tell Richard Sherman that. You knew, did you retire immediately after that? No, I didn't. You played another year? With Seattle? Yep. 
How was it the year after? Was it awkward? What was it? Was it Earl Thomas, right? <laughs> Earl Thomas gets hurt. He's getting carted off the field, flips off Pete Carroll. Yeah, that was a different time, though. I, was, I wasn't That's what I'm saying. That. You weren't there for that. No, I wasn't there for that. But it seemed like that team was something special, and then something went wrong, and it all revolves around not handing the ball off. Yeah, I mean, you know, in, 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 in certain aspects of the game, you know, as men, we talk to own up, you know. And, Accountability. And, Exactly. Yeah. And take account for for your for your mistakes. Yeah. And a lot of my teammates didn't feel that uh that Pete did. And I mean, you know, you kinda they kinda that they kinda kinda followed him. Well guys, that is it. That's enough of Marshall Lynch, I can tell you right now that's all we're gonna be doing today. That was absolutely fantastic. That was a lot of fun, man. I've just spent the last like two and a half hours researching this comeback by Marshall Lynch and uh, finishing it all off with a good look, a good inside look at that fateful second down pass. Rated the worst play in NFL history. So if you've enjoyed these videos, if you want to see more, please hit that like button and subscribe. The like button helps with the algorithm. You don't need to subscribe, but if you do press like, then my videos will start to, you know, turn up on your newsfeed. So once again, once and for all, I want to say a merry, merry Christmas from myself and my family here in Alice Springs to you guys, wherever you are in the world, and I hope you have a fantastic holiday season. Let's go Marshall and Lynch. Beast mode, baby. He's back. I can see it now.